Okay, hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone at Conte's Meet 2021. Thank you for joining us. Um, today's topic is spirituality, spirituality and sticky rice arts and social impact at Lloyd Arts Fest. Um, I'll do a round of introductions first. This is like a really casual fireside chat, so we want to take it really easy. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the discussion chat box as well. We will answer it. Um, so just a round of introductions and also some background to what we are talking about today so everyone knows what's what. I'm Clara. Um, I'm from a design agency and cultural consultancy called In The Wow. Uh, we are Loy Arts Fair's overseas outreach partner. So that's how we know these guys. Um, we have also Wayla here. Wayla is the director of Loy Arts Fair's and Perum for Arts. Yes, Wayla. everyone. So what club. Yes. And then we also have Gerald with us. Gerald is a sculptor and artist. He's based in Singapore. Hello, hello. Uh, Loy Arts Fest, it's organized and produced by Prior for Arts. So the the focus for 2021 is really on the community in the Dansai district, which is in Loy province. Um, Loy is in the northeastern part of Thailand. It's a very mountainous region. Um, the main activity is agriculture. Um, but one main thing that we wanted to focus on was actually Pita Korn Festival, uh, which is very unique to the Dansai area. And if I put it, if I put it very crudely, I'll summarize it crudely, it's a little bit like a Dia de los Muertos. It's like a ghost festival. A uh, key part of it is also there's this very colorful parade, there's masks, there's costumes. Um, so naturally, it has become a bit of a tourist attraction as well, and that's um, changing it. It's, it's, there are questions about its impact on the local community, the Dansai community's uh, identity as well. And what LAF is here to do is really to give voice to the community, to create a safe space for them to have a discussion about this. Um, and to do that through the language of an expression of contemporary art. And that's kind of how Gerald got involved. So Gerald is a Singapore-based sculptor and artist, um, and his practice very much um, is based on like a material exploration. So it's an exploration between the boundaries of culture and interpretations. Um, and he actually worked with the LAF team and the Dansai community to produce this seven meter tall participatory sculpture that's in a community hospital right now, and it's called Kao Niao. It means sticky yes, rice. Yes, correct. Kao Niao. <laughs> Wayla, can you introduce more about Dansai first? Sure, sure. So let me go to this presentation. Hello, everyone. We are Le Afres, our last team. So uh, let me begin with Thailand first. Uh, I think uh, because we are the one of the like, top 10 inbound destinations uh, for tourists around the world. So I think uh, many of you already have a picture of Thailand already, but I can imagine from uh, this question that I have with my friend abroad about Thailand. If you're talking about Thailand, you may be thinking about uh, temple like Dawn Temple or Wat Arun, like really classical, ancient uh, architectures nearby the river, also the ancient history of Thailand. And some of you might thinking about like uh, the sky train, the skyscraper, like the city lifestyle in Bangkok, very modern and also affordable with uh, a lot of fun things. And also the nightlife. And if you're talking about art, uh, I think some of you may know about the Bangkok Art and Culture Center or BACC, is that like uh, the eight to nine floors art center. But fun fact, I have to share with you that this is like one of a famous art center that we have here in Thailand. Maybe I can say that if you're thinking about the contemporary art center here in Thailand, which have like really active to create a new exhibition, we have less than 10 in whole countries. So this is really problematic if you're thinking about the accessibility to contemporary art here. So, if we're not Whoa. talking about Bangkok, I think everyone will imagine about a uh, seascape and luxury lifestyle in Phuket. And when we're talking about the sea, you might see the cultural show like uh, the circus that like uh, a lot of fancy style that happen in the far away island here in Thailand. This is like general picture that you see from the tourists. And about food, like Pad Thai, I know everyone know about Pad Thai and som tam and tom yam kung mm. and if you don't have a chance to visit thailand but uh, you can uh, have a chance to visit some media from thailand tourism authorities 
you might see the cultural product or cultural art like fancy golden costume in uh, the Thai classical dancer and also the Thai classical dance like mm. uh, really gorgeous uh, and really uh, big scale performance called Khung. Mm. Yeah, this is the, the, the general thing that you will see even in the World Expo. And if you're talking about Thai art, you might be familiar with this form of art. It's like a, we call like a no. It's created by inspiration of the form of the flame. But I have to say that when we talk about learn art fairs, we working on the location that far away from this kind of uh, perception. This is the art form of uh, people here that you can see on the temple. That's mm-hmm. quite uh, really naive and folk style, different from the, the thing that you uh, see in the previous slide. And or even the sculpture is might look really cute and really simple. This is folk style of art sculpture that you can find in the temple here in Lai, especially in that size. And this kind of food that might look not like uh, Tom Yam Kung or Pad Thai. So, I'm, I'm talking about the place that uh, in Jansai we have rain like whole years. Mm-hmm. So every time we have rain uh, mm-hmm. and after that we will have sea of mist happen around here because uh, I have to say in Jansai is uh, like one of the most highest place in Thailand mm-hmm. from the sea level. So that's why we have this phenomenon for whole years. Mm-hmm. And this is the place look like when you imagine how far away about that size to Bangkok. It's like it takes almost seven hours to travel by car from Siroam to that size. And for the Lai Art Fest, uh, it's like, uh, I have to say, we are the first contemporary art festival that uh, hold here. Uh, I have to say that uh, we create a festival during the national lockdown. So even Thai uh, local artists who live outside uh, Lai province, that side district, they cannot travel to the festival location. And of course, the international artists cannot travel here. Uh, this is the thing that uh, vital or essence for us that we would like to uh, invite uh, new idea, new inspiration from artists outside to come to share, exchange and have conversation with the local in the dance science community because we have a lot of problem happen here uh, about the cultural diversity and oppressions, mm-hmm. especially the cultural homogenized. So the way that we have to try to be creative uh, is about receiving the blueprint or idea from uh, artists outside and working with the local community to make those kind of ideas become tangible. And you said the culture is homogenized. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you mean by that? I can talk about the thing about uh, cultural homogenized by uh, connecting to this artwork by Jero Liao. It's called Kao Niao or like in English word is called sticky rice. Uh, this is the thing that uh, we created by uh, the project called Peter Cohn Abstraction. So I would like to uh, read our conversation to that project so you can understand more about cultural homogenized. Like I mentioned to you before, uh, this is uh, this dance site. They have like one uh, art festival. It's local festival called Peter Cohn Festival. Peter Cohn Festival is like uh, a big merit ceremony that hold on three days every year here in that size. Uh, the story of the of this merit day is connected to the the tales about previous life of the Buddha. Mm-hmm. So one life of the Buddha, they they have a story about grace sacrifice so uh, they have uh, the first day they will uh, invite the angels or the great spirit to come to protect the ceremony uh, the second day they will create a parade of to welcome the king and the third day they will like uh, it's a buddhism uh, ceremony that they will uh, make a, a 
they will make a prayer or chanting about the tales of the Buddha. So, especially on the second day, when we're talking about the parade, they will have a uh, uh, activity called uh, Pita Khon play. Uh, you can imagine from the picture, like people will dress with masks and costume and run around to the town. It's like Halloween. And when you wear this costume, you can trick or treat people around, like stealing some goods or pushing people away or try to like make a dirty joke to the people. But no one will know who who, who is inside that mask. So it's like a fun uh, activity that people can play along together. But uh, sadly, uh, when the, this festival become more popular, uh, and the Thailand Tourism Authority and a lot of uh, uh, organizations come here to like invest more to the festival. So the fun thing it start to shape from the from the Thai playground. It's become a parade like this mm-hmm. uh, and the form is changed mm-hmm. from the city playground it's become a parade mm-hmm. because it's not fun at all it's just like uh, the people dress in fancy clothes and just walk by so this is the the, the mentality that uh, the the authority like uh, put it on the local festival and change their essence mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gerald, you did this uh, a workshopping session with the local community, right? Were, were there stories that they share about how it was like before? Yeah, so actually uh, working with the local uh, festival team, they, they organized a lot of these community meetings. And uh, the group that they that attended these meetings, there were young people, there were older people. So they seen different, uh, they seen the festival grow over the different uh, ages. So uh, a lot of them shared that it was quite different in the past, actually. And then even the way that, that they made the mask, like the old mask, which I think Bela shared the pictures of just now, they were very much uh, simpler and they didn't have a lot of, or they didn't have at all, uh, didn't have any classical, uh, didn't have any classical uh, motifs or designs. So like in the slides now, if you can see on the left is the mask that we have today. Correct. Yeah. So the the entire look of it changed, and and I think uh, they also shared that in the past, you know, the the costumes were supposed to be made out of like discarded clothing, and and also the the mask also should be discarded after because it represents like the bad energy. But today, like the the mask are so pretty that they put them in museums. So mm. it is a bit different. Uh, uh, the, it evolves. It evolves over time. What is it made of? Actually? It's like uh, the uh, the hearts of the coconut tree. Yes. Wow. So two two parts. Yeah. One is the sticky rice. The the sticky rice basket is on the top of the head, okay. and the face is actually made from the like Wela said, the husk of the coconut uh, tree. So when the tree uh, peels, it it has this piece that comes out. Oh. And they make it into the mask. Oh, yeah. okay. You can see it's like uh, from from the paintings of uh, the mask. Uh, when you see like uh, on the left hand side, it's like a now today Sweda Khon mask. It's like uh, they combine a lot of like uh, element or inspiration from uh, the painting style that I I show you before, like like you know, which come from the central uh, aesthetics of Thailand. Mm. But uh, on the life right hand side, it's like a the native aesthetic that happened here. So mm-hmm. it's like got a place and homogenized. And I can say so like this is the, the, the real thing that used to happen here. It's like mm-hmm. the folks uh, play folks festival that uh, a lot of uh, local people can join to the festival and they can have fun. But as, as uh, the Gerald just mentioned that the clothes or the costume, they collect the unused uh, fabric mm-hmm. or worn out fabric that they can find in the community uh, to create. Mm-hmm. But nowadays, if they, they dress like that and they want to join the parade, they might got kicked out from the local authority because I, I cannot like have evidence of this incident, but I heard from the local people, they say like, uh, because your costume is not beautiful enough, so you cannot join the parade. So it's quite sad. Like in the past, where they were using 
sort of like reused materials and old fabrics and and materials from around then. Whereas the modern look is that polished lacquer um, mask. And, and and you and you can see in this photo. Look look at how creative they are. The head is a, a umbrella. You know the eyes. They they have so much more expression because you see the faces when they paint is like different and and if you look at the newer mask they kind of all are like one style you know they have the teeth like fangs and it's a one style and i think it also is very significant today in thailand because i think it was 2019 the miss universe mm. uh, costume they, they adopted the mask as as like the national um what, what do you call like like a costume for the miss universe uh, right. yeah national the, costume yeah so the Pitakon became like a symbol of of uh, of the, the entire nation, right? So it become like homogenized into the the ah, kind of Bangkok uh, classical style. So ah. whereas, Wela, you were saying that the the modern motifs on the modern version of the Pitakon mask, the flame and the the little swirls and all that, those are not what is like traditional to the area. Yeah, it's not traditional to the area at all, but uh, because of art education here in Thailand is very problematic and we are lack of uh, contemporary art space or activity that spread around in Thailand. Only the people who live in big city can access to that. Mm -hmm. So I have to say this is quite critical that the community lack of the knowledge to understand what really happened to their culture. Mm -hmm. So the change of the form of Peter Cohn, the people here didn't aware that we start to, uh, when the old days, they just collect everything they can find in the community to, to make the costume of the Peter Cohn. But nowadays, everything that they create for Peter Cohn costume, they have to buy. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, if you look at, uh, like for me, doing my research, I watch a lot of uh, uh, YouTube videos of the past parades of, of course the modern ones that are documented by tourists and you can see a lot of them like it's it's really like there is a, a, a tele uh what do you call that uh mobile phone companies with their booths yeah. and it's uh, it's like a commercial uh you know it's like it's formula like one or something show. like that it's like super crowded and commercial so it's very very far from what it originally uh, was and I think it almost it feels like it doesn't. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Willa. But yeah, for me, I feel like it doesn't serve the need of the people anymore, because yeah. it serves the need for someone else. Yeah. Yes, because all of that kind of uh, truth that you saw is created by the commercial organizers who create the planet for for to serve. Uh, the commercials uh, exposure or something like that. This is the reason that people who visit uh, the festival here they feel disappointed because they cannot uh, feel the essence or the spirit of the people at all. Yeah, that's that's interesting because it reminds me of what you said about the four needs, right? There's food, mm. there's comfort, there's shelter, but then the fourth one you mentioned, like it's like spirituality or spirit or yeah, yeah, it's like uh the the the, the the ability to express uh, yourselves or something like that. Uh, art can be a tool mm -hmm. that you can express what you are, what you believe, or what is your opinion about the things. And I, I would like to connect our, conversa our conversation to uh, the starting of the creations of Cup Neo that... Uh, that inspired us a lot yeah, and yeah. like the beginning of the creation is come from this picture that we sent to Gerald. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's really interesting because they I couldn't be there and I'm working remotely. And uh, so the team actually sent me a lot of videos of the landscape of the of the pictures of the houses and I mean I've been to Thailand, I have but I have not been to Dansai and and I, I think those uh, one of the photos was this one that we are sharing on the screen. Uh, I'm not sure if you can make make up what this is, but this is actually a a naga or a snake, which is like a holy uh, a venerated uh, uh, snake. But uh, they made it out of a used car tire, mm -hmm. so it's a shrine made out of a used car tire. And I, I 
this image really struck me because it's I found it to be very creative, and it's very much like the essence of the the, the mask that they they make. You see, so. So are they actually if, worshiping this sculpture? Yeah, yeah. As you can see, it's the what they they offer the coconut, and you can see the joystick yeah. in the in the bowl and, in front the, of them. And the pedestal is a is like a tractor tire. If you see the pedestal, right. oh, it's, right. it's a big tire, right? That's so right. and they pour the cement inside just to make oh, it stand. Okay, okay. And and actually the wire that holds up the naga is barbed wire. The people there, they 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 really creative. But because I'm lack of the knowledge, I'm lack of the resource. So I try to do everything that uh I can do for 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 like express my feelings or opinion or something. Like for example, they would like to worship the naga, but they don't have a money enough. To buy like uh, the gorgeous statues or something, but they try so they try to create it by the material that they have. You know, they I think because it's such an agriculture area, it's so far away in the mountains. They they really have to rely on their creativity to 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 survive. You know, and it's such a precious thing that they have. But I feel that a lot of us living in the city, we kind of lose that because it's so easy to like. When I was saying, oh, you want to worship naga? Okay, you just go and buy the naga. But yeah. actually, this the essence of the naga is like, it's here. Like you can see it here so much more. In the car tire, actually. <laughs> how do you how do you feel they approach this as well? Like, is it a very matter of fact thing? A lot of people from this area have a certain. Uh, they feel like uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, I sure. I see it as like a, some 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 sort of a inferiority complex because they are not from the center. So they they mm. you mentioned Willa about how there is a Thai word that they use like that the that means boss. So they, yeah, they tend nine. to yeah they tend to refer to people uh, with that word lah. That that the people that come from the center. I I think from this image actually I I, I used it as a kind of um, it was it was really the inspiration. So I used it as a kind of a guiding. Uh, uh, Direction to see the work. So actually, the work eventually was made up from this uh, sticky rice basket. So I I looked for the material essence of the, so which is like the mask making. I I saw it as, the material essence was the creative essence, that that showed the people's creativity. So not so much in the, designs of it, but how the fact that they use the coconut and the sticky rice basket. So that was my starting point for the work. There's also a, a, a album cover of uh, Ulam, uh, which is uh, their uh, music that is indigenous to this area, and uh, I highly encourage you to uh, the viewers to check it out. It is really, really amazing style of jazz that is very uh, folkish, and and so to get into the project, I I <laughs> listen to a lot of that that music just to kind of understand that area. So, Cheryl, you would like to go to this slide to explain more about the. Uh, the process of creation. So through this, I think I looked at the mask as like the material, and I, I it, being from the city also, it, I needed some time to kind of digest this information and this uh, this uh, entire way of thinking. So on one hand, you have the mask, but I also noticed a very strong part about the costume. They actually had uh, cow bells, so I found that very interesting, and I was really wondering like. Okay, this seems to be a very key part of the the story, and this is a traditional. Uh, these images of uh, a recent one, but the masks are of the old style. So mm. uh, these are some of the other images of the festival. So not just the cow bells, but when, after I did some more research, I realized oh, it's actually like a big fertility festival, you know, mm. and because it's fertility the, festival. Yeah, or at least I I understand it as that because they do have a male figure and a female figure. And one of each, and it's a very big, and of course they have the 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 sexual organs and all that. So there's a lot of emphasis on reproducing and f for harvest, you know. So uh, fertility. So in that respect, it's something that is very very old. Well, what's that photo Much in older. the lower left corner? Uh, it's a it's a little. What's that? Fan. It's two people, two puppets having sex. On right. A, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of sex. Uh, it's very rude or very crude, you know. But that's why I say it's very old. Is 
Right. It's yeah. from a different time. So there is so they're so free, you know, when yes. you talk about these things. I remember the workshop you did with the community. There was a lady who was sharing how when she was a young girl, she was so afraid to go out when this Pita coin was happening because the guys would dress up and they would run after her with the big um, big dicks, yeah. Big yeah. dicks <laughs> and poke her with it and she would cry because she was just <laughs> getting teased by them. Yeah, yeah. So it's very free you know so, Wayla, is, is this something that um happens now where there's people who want to keep it the traditional way and then the modern and then people who want to make it a modern commercial because i'm sure that is there's like money involved too right yeah there is some money involved but uh when we're talking about the people who work with the lo- uh the local authorities or the government institutes they really want to keep it like uh, this kind of set up i mean like the modern ways of the festival but if we're talking about the the people in the local they really want to keep the original ways of the festival because it's really fun mm. like gerald says when they make like dirty jokes or dirty ads to each other no one get upset even if like sometimes it look like off limit but they also have a limit that they accept that okay, we will not make it more than that. Like for example, when you dress as the ghost, you can like steal the stuff that sell on the wood street vendor, oh. something like that. Oh. But they didn't like a, <laughs> like they didn't steal like the expensive goods or something like that. They just steal like some snack or drink, um. yeah, that they can enjoy and make a party of it. Also, oh, when tourists go now, do they also pretend to be a ghost and? few things Do they some tourists this? they really like to join that ways uh, in nowadays but uh, there are the rules that if you would like to enjoy this festival you have to like total uh disguise yourself so mm. so when you wear this costume uh no one knows who is inside it's like so much opportunity for mischief <laughs> <laughs> You get very naughty. Yeah, and it's like a day for everyone to let their hair down. Yeah. Something like that. To release some maybe like a tension or something. Just to, you know, have fun. Yeah. And and, and I think to not forget that this festival is three days. So this is just one part of it that is at the end. But there is a whole part about the past life of Buddha, the making marriage, and the, the, the beginning of the festival is the spiritual leader, Zhao Po Guan actually retrieving uh, like a stone from the river. So there's a whole, it's an entire religious and spiritual festival actually. Awila, maybe you can share about the the <laughs> yeah. Bun, Bun Luang. Luang. Bun Luang. Uh, yeah. This is like three day festival. The Peter Kuan part is only one day. But uh, for the first day, it's like a very sacred uh, ceremony that uh, Chao Pao Puan and team will bring uh, the people to the river and then they will go down to the river to uh, uh, bring up the stone from the river just to be a representative of the angels and that we call Prakupakut. It's like uh, the angel who protects uh, the lums or the kingdom or something like that. Mm-hmm. So they invite that uh, stone and bring that stone come to the temple to make like uh, to protect all the bad things that happen mm-hmm. in 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 the in the town or the village. Who is this Jiao Poguan? Jiao Poguan is a community leader. Uh, you can say he also be a shaman who connect to the greater spirit mm-hmm. who protect that size. Mm-hmm. So, but in the term of cultural functions, he is he is the one who like uh, past or heritage uh, or the tradition, culture or belief of the community from generation to the generation. So, most of the cultural event that happen here in Dansai, you have to ask the advice and permission from the Japa Kuan. Because he will, will say to you, this is the right way or this is the wrong way to make it happen. Okay. And Jero, you met Jero Pogwan. Yeah, so part of the... So this is actually one of the... This is a Zoom meeting that we had with Pogwan. So on the right is him on in the parade. You know? So it's like a 
pretty uh, it, was, it was very pretty stressful for me so he's like a, he's, he's the real deal you know? he's the real big spiritual leader so I've never met a spiritual leader or a shaman on Zoom before so this is my first time and then also I wasn't sure as an outsider from total outsider I wasn't mm-hmm. sure how I was supposed to approach it right. but thankfully the team you know we had the live translation and and uh, it was like seeking an audience with the king so, well, uh, in the parade Japokwan is he on like a uh, buffalo like the is like uh, not not buffalo but no uh, is like uh, the, the chair right the yeah, chair is the chair right? and it okay. changes uh, from time to time mm-hmm. I, 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 I think like uh, the years before the COVID is like really big like uh, carrier that he have to mm-hmm. like uh, sit on and okay. I feel like this is my interpretation of the parade. So, yeah. Right. Because mm-hmm. uh, I, I feel like a king of that side, but not a real king, but representative of the king and not king of Thailand. What, what and, is and, that differentiation? Yeah, it's really differentiation because it's like you're not, because uh, in the old day, we don't have a concept of nation at all. We mm. just like, a, it's like if you're thinking about it, the old days that we have a lot of warlord. Like previously, this area wasn't a part of the kingdom. It was part of like Laos, for example. Yeah, um, the uh, Lan Shan. Yeah, Lan yeah. Shan. Interestingly for me, also meeting Chapo Guan is to also understand like they are, because he's the, he's the cultural and spiritual authority of the, of the festival. So, so actually like the dates are decided by him. So it's not like on the calendar. I think he has a dream, right? And, and through his uh, communication with the spirit world, and the dates are decided. So actually, it is, and you know, part of it is about the past life of Buddha as well in the story of uh, Prabhu Sandon. But also, it's like as an animistic uh, beliefs as well. So there is a kind of uh, two sides to it. So I think, like um, hearing it from him, he, he's sharing a lot about. The, um, this this the, the this aspect of the festival and also like how how for him the process of communicating the experience and the history his version of the history of why why we have this festival and the origins of this festival from him so that was really really helpful Could yeah the, the interesting facts that Gerald says that uh when 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 he decides which date uh Peter Korn festival should be happen uh he has to connect with some like greater spirit so there are some uh at uh at ceremony that make him trance and to connect and like uh, decide which day would happen so normally in the old days they will decide uh he will decide the date of the festival only like uh, one month before the festival start mm. uh and the festival uh usually like uh mobilized between uh May until July, it depend on 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 the connection between. It depend on the greater spirit desires. But uh, nowadays, with negotiation with the modern days, uh, the Thailand Tourism Authority try to negotiate with him, yeah. and also the greater spirit that okay, maybe I need more days okay. because I need to make a PR event, yeah. <laughs> a PR campaign. One month in advance is become three months in advance. Uh, now today it's become six months in advance. Wow! Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can see it's like this is like a one thing that they have to negotiate with the modern. Uh, uh, management right, right. Now. the spirits and, have to keep up with the time <laughs> yeah and, and can you imagine so yeah just talking about Willa's point about homogeneous it's like that you know this is like they try to make this like the city already uh, yeah so this is like the the participation from the community and some of them are the other artists that are I mean are artists like me that are externals that so we connect with the community and uh, in the in the group we have uh, doc- doctors, uh, people who own the hostel, uh, people who are art teachers in the youth uh, outreach group. So uh, a lot of them actually shared so different uh, uh, experiences uh, in their individual experience with the festival. But so when speaking to Po Guan, you hear it from a historical point of view. So that the big ceremony is held at the, the stupa, 
this uh, si songra uh, stupa so this stupa is actually very significant to the entire festival so he shared about the history of that earlier we looked at the the, the costumes right and you, i was pointed out about the cowbells so he was like oh you know the cowbells are there because of the buffalo so in, in from a historical point of view the the shape of the mask and all that it is also made to honor the buffalo actually so you see the horns like uh, for the basket is, is made in that way so it actually it is a significance and the symbol of the buffalo so mm -hmm. uh, even behind the stupa they have found a lot of buffalo horns from the past uh, like a grave so um, a lot of buffaloes were used to construct the stupa and uh, they, they help men to do farming so we have a very close relationship with that so i think he shared a lot about that part so the work actually um, we were working so remotely uh, i was working all, all the artists were working remotely right? but thankfully throughout the process of the project the team actually managed to find a space at the, at the hospital so for me as an artist uh, trying to use that information and work remotely so i'm using a lot of satellite data to kind of um, spatially map out and try to kind of understand the, the space um, what, what yeah, is so this my, site actually could you share about the site that was chosen so it's actually in a community hospital, that's like Crown Prince Community Hospital. When the team, I think we like to share a bit more about it, they shared, they, they spoke to the hospital director and he was very, very uh, interested to convert the space into a, a, a space to show artworks. Yeah, I have to say that we're quite lucky to to working with the hospital because uh, the vision of the director of the hospital, he, he believed that the medical service in the hospital is just the end of the process mm -hmm. so when people got sick they have to come to the hospital but uh, if he can prevent people to come to the hospital by create the well-being to the community mm -hmm. no one have to go in the hospital so that's why he worked a lot with the community project to create the well-being outside and the thing the one thing that he quite uh, focused on is about create a public space for the community. Another problem that we we, we found out here in that side, they like even they have a lot of uh, natural sites that you can go there to take a rest or enjoy the scenery or something like that. But if you're thinking about actual public space that you can use it as a function as a park mm -hmm. here in that side, we didn't have it at all. So that's why uh, the hospital director he decides to open some space in the hospital and create it become a community space for the community. That's why this is the, the beginning of our conversation because uh, one thing that I have to say is to, uh, to uh, I have to say when we're thinking about the art project, uh, we have to find a collaborator who uh, have a resource and view to take care of the artwork. And yeah, mm -hmm. the hospital is like a really well matched to this collaboration. Was that a very key point for you all as well? Yeah, yeah, I have to say it's just, that's the thing that we would like to uh, connect all the locations uh, in that size, become a livable space. Mm -hmm. And this we share this same vision with the hospital director. That's why the art project happened here in the hospital. So apart from City Ride, we have like more than uh, 10 artworks that like install around the hospital area mm. so the people can go there they can go there to enjoy the, the artwork inside the hospital because uh here in that side we don't have art gallery at all mm. actually when part of the artwork because we used a lot of the sticky rice basket uh, the people actually were told to they had a campaign where you come to get vaccinated and you bring your old sticky rice basket so it was made from these sticky rice baskets that were donated by people can when they come for the vaccination. Right. Can you share a bit about this sticky rice basket? <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, when you stream the rice, you have to have an equipment to stream the rice. And most of the rice that people here in that side eat is not like a plain rice, but mm -hmm. it's a sticky rice. So they put the rice on this basket and uh, put it on the oven to stream it and to, to cook the rice. This is like a really, uh, uh, how would I say, uh, common equipment that you can find in any households mm -hmm. in that size or even in Isan's regions. It's just yeah. like the north region of Thailand. And sticky rice baskets of what? It's an important uh, element to make to make a pita mask. 
just like Wayla said, they put the rice inside the basket and they put it above the pot. So when they steam it, the, the basket is, you know, it allows it to be cooked through the basket. So it, it has a very smart the invention, actually. Uh, and a very common thing, a very uh, low cost. <laughs> so, so we decided to use it because it's interesting how it's a key element for the construction of the mask. And so we use a lot of uh, local materials for this. Work. Uh, on the right, you can see the guys weaving the bamboo leaf, which is used to cover half of the work. Okay, so this is just the early forms of the, the artwork, uh, the early sketches of it. So we developed the form um, based on the, the shape of the basket and we're thinking of creating a space where people can rest and relax. So part of this was created with a framework that was uh, originally planned for it to be bamboo. Uh, but then as the discussion developed with the hospital director, we decided to make it more permanent. Uh, so the, the covering was only bamboo and uh, created a kind of a steel structure to to house the baskets. Uh, yeah, so this is just uh, some images of the sketches. So um, we start on the left with the computer generated uh, a form uh, or dimensions. And then we work a lot with the local craftsmen and builders to translate that uh, into the, the materials and then size it up. And, on the right is the our production guy there with his coffee cup. <laughs> <laughs> They're pouring the cement base for the work. So this is just uh, some images of the a study of the inside of the form. And uh, a lot of work uh, was done in the computer just to, because we are working remotely, just to get information and for, for me to get information and, and uh, uh, understand the scale and the experience of the what a viewer will see when they enter the work from where the sun will cast the shadow and uh, so spatial information on how to construct the work so we use a lot of software I use a lot of software to get that information and how was it like working with the team on the ground oh uh, it was great like I think they they were my arms and legs and they helped me to you know kind of find out uh, stuff like for materials working with the people who find the bamboo and what color and, and all that so they went they were the ones running around so I'm really really grateful for that we wanted the, uh, people to donate the basket so actually you can see some of the baskets actually have holes because they're burnt and they're old baskets so you can have the whole we have the whole range of like different colors for the baskets and Wayla, what was the reaction like from the people who donated the, the sticky rice basket yeah, it's quite interesting uh, atmosphere, I can say. I feel like the people here, they have like a really uh, energetic, uh, voluntary spirit. When when we uh, ask about the donations uh, of the sticky rice baskets, or we call what, uh, through the, the hospital's uh, news distrib distributions, uh, they really like participative. Like people, when they come here to get vaccinated, uh, to get vaccines, they bring the sticky rice basket to us, and also uh, when even some people who have no uh, uh, business here with the hospital, they also like uh, bring the sticky rice basket to the donation point. Uh, every day, I have to say, even some people who don't have the sticky rice baskets in their house, they go to the shop to buy it. So through the process, we receive more than three hundred sticky rice basket. Wow. Uh, to yeah, to create this scripture. Can you imagine that? Uh, with the item that normally you may have only one in your house mm. and we got 300 it's like a big collaboration and the donation of sticky rice buses is to come uh, more and more every day wow, and, nice. and it's so amazing yeah. and i think it's so amazing because the hospital is during a pandemic so mm. the hospital's news is like i think it reaches a lot of people so i think i find it amazing that that these people actually you know when they come to vaccinate they bring this they, they want to get involved yeah why, why do you so, think it resonated so well yeah because i think uh they uh, I think they're really, uh, I have to say something thing that's quite amazing for me to working with the community, not just here, but I think maybe in the Asian context, we have something called social bond. It means like if you really need help or you ask for the support from the societies, from the community, the people tend to help you or support you. So uh, when we announce about this thing, we would like to have the the Huan or Siki rice basket uh, donation to create the artwork. A lot of people, they want to be participate. So if you go to the scripture, you may find the names and surnames of the people who donate right down on the basket. 
so you can see like uh, who is who giving this to the the sculptures or the, or the project mm. yeah they, they would like to be a part of it we create a good relationship and atmosphere between contemporary art uh, belief and also the community through this project yeah and i think uh, like Villa has mentioned i think it's like um, because there isn't any um, exposure to contemporary art and by contemporary art i mean like kind of a different way of seeing how the idea of the mask can be expressed is like i think for our this work at the at the hospital it's just also an example of a different kind of expression of a way of thinking about uh, Peter Korn and the culture. Yes, because uh, one thing in common that we share to the community, when they ask what it is or something like that, we will say to them, this is the Peter Korn. And they will ask, what? Why is Peter Korn? And then it's the beginning of the conversation. Yeah, what yeah. is the reason behind this project? Wayla, you were sharing before about how after this um, festival, they actually created a Danzai City Network. Danzai Art and Creative City Network is a collection of the people who become the active citizens of Danzai. Uh, there are the gathering of the people uh, who work in medical service in uh, the resource owner. Some is educator, some is like a local activist, uh, even entrepreneur and youth group of Danzai. Normally, they all of them already work uh, individually for their own uh, focus. For example, in in term of like campaign for environmental issue or campaign mm -hmm. on uh, uh, try to manage off stay dog and cat mm -hmm. or even the uh, well being here in the Dansai. But sad thing that they never work together as a collective officially. So when we start the the Learn Affairs uh, project here, it's like uh, the agendas or the event that collect them together to work in with the same things. So with this uh, moment, we create, uh, we try to um, encourage them to move on together strategically mm -hmm. and officially uh, to create a negotiation power and collective voice of the people in that size. And at the end, they form that cultural network. This is the process of the making sticky rice. And you see there, there are the collective of the local craftsmen that join uh, the making of this sculpture. Uh, that's the thing that create through the festival and also belief from the project of sticky rice. So LAF is like the platform which brings them or which brought them all together having completed the festival already for Wela and for Gerald having completed the sculpture even though you haven't seen it in person. How do y'all feel about it? What's what's next? First actually yeah, I, yeah, hope you can, can. I, I hope to see the work next year when we can travel hopefully. Uh, and uh, I hope to actually visit the that side and Wela can share. Yeah yeah sure sure I like Kara's uh that's Kara says um uh, I would like to use the opportunity that uh, the Loy Art Fest create to bring back the, the voice of the people here in that side because a lot of people here in that side they try to uh, make a chance and send out the, the notice that they don't want uh, Peter Cohn be like uh, in the modern day. They want to get back to uh, the old day but not in terms of the form, but in terms of the spirit and the essence. Mm -hmm. uh, but they cannot fight with the authority because they have uh, yes, they have authority and they have budget and uh, manpower to, to create things. But here, as an individual, their voice is so weak and so small. We hope this our project can like portray and reflect the essence and create a benchmarking for the people who try to work on uh, the Peter Horn subjects here in that side that to reconsider it. also the project that we create is include a lot of voice from the people in the community mm -hmm. so through the project as a medium uh, we send that voice to the people who visit here we hope that we can achieve uh, this uh, mission 
But uh, this is just beginning, I can say, it's because uh, we still have a plan to create more artwork under this title uh, to reflect the diversity of, uh, and creativity of Pita for itself, which is like the, the major spirit of people of that size. Uh, the, the Sticky Ride create one essence that uh, I, I, as a curator of the project, believe like one structure, one construction that uh, Gerald create, they can diverse to many forms. Uh, by covering with the local material, so the form can be uh, affected by the creativity of the community. Mm -hmm. So this is sense we uh, can transfer to other kind of projects. And there are several things that we would like to uh, team up with uh, the local community to fight for. Here in that side, there are a lot of uh, cultural uh, products or cultural diversity that uh, that also important as much as Peter Korn. For example, another project that we create is related to uh, the ceremony of Chon Kwan. Uh, we call the project Kwan Ei Kwan Ma. That they believe that when bad fortune or accident happen to the people here, some uh, ritual spirit or ritual energy might like escape away from your body and will make you sick. So they have a ceremony to like being back or that kind of thing. We hope that uh, our festival will be the platform of the state that we put the spotlight on that diversity and uh, bring all of these things on state to make a public exposure so they can be exist here in in the society mm -hmm. and people outside will perceive it. Yeah, I, I think what is quite important and I, I see it in LAF also is the involvement of the international community actually. Um, you involved international artists from different countries and I think they bring a sort of like outsider perspective um, that is still respectful and understands that essence that you try to say um, because I, I guess tourism um, it's a major economic driver uh, there are a lot of benefits to that um, but it's also a way to show how there are different ways it can be approached um, different audience that can be reached and it doesn't necessarily always have to be this like really simplified gentrified um, one tourist product you know? yeah Carla I would like to emphasize some more uh, critical issue that uh, the outsider eyes mm -hmm. uh, that you mentioned about international collaboration quite helpful for our movement because here in Thailand, we have a misconception about the culture. We believe that preservation of culture has to keep it in the old day light. Mm -hmm. It's mean like in the like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, culture, culture is a fool it things. They mm -hmm. keep changing uh, with the contemporary context. So when we're talking about the authority, about the, or how we can uh, preserve the culture or something like that. They always thinking about okay, in the old day look like this, we should keep it like this, or we separate the modern modernization of the culture to other things. So we 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 didn't have something in the middle. We have just the thing in the old mm -hmm. and the thing that happened news. But the contemporary periods or contemporary status of the culture, we we disconnect from it. We didn't give a priority or we didn't validate the invitation of the of the international uh, artists who come with the fallen eye can help us to validate or portray what is the contemporary situation uh, that we facing or encounter in this community. Uh, transform is into some uh, visible. Uh, evident like artwork or mm -hmm. art project and mm -hmm. also even like uh, in uh, uh, collaboration across the regions that like come from Bangkok, uh, Chiang Mai or anywhere in Thailand to this area to create an art project together. Contemporary art accessibility here in Thailand is very difficult because we are lack of the support from the from the government institutes and also the private sector, they didn't feel like it necessities. Mm -hmm. And the concept of the contemporary art here in Thailand is like you create the artwork and create an exhibition, show mm -hmm. it off to uh, the audience, and that's all. It affects the number of support or policy that we can get from any kind of institutes. That's why uh, that's why uh, our movement in Lai is quite very really tough and difficult. 
mm. is related to why we need to ask for support from internationals mm. instead of like try to apply the grant from the local. So Wayla, wait, hang on, one last thing. Are you planning to have LAF again next year? The LAF Art Fest will happen uh, by annual, so it will happen again in 2000. 23rd but uh, during the year break we still continue the the festival activity so more artwork will be installed in the location of dance size and we will have a uh, uh, the art project like a small one continuously happen in that side under the brand of Loy Art Fest. Yeah LAF's website is linked in the exhibitors profile Gerald's website is there look into the exhibitions profile to find out more. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank both you. of you. Thanks, Thank Bella. you. Thank Thanks, you. Leila.